But if you ask a learned Hindu, who is well versed with the scriptures, he will tell you that the Hindus should believe and worship only one almighty God. But the common Hindu, he believes in a philosophy known as pantheism. The common Hindu says that everything is God. The tree is God, the sun is God, the moon is God, the human being is God, the snake is God. What we Muslims say, everything is God's. G-O-D with an apostrophe, yes. Everything belongs to God. The tree belongs to God, the sun belongs to God, the moon belongs to God, the human being belongs to God, the snake belongs to God. So the major difference between the common Hindu and the common Muslim is, the common Hindu says, everything is God. We Muslims say everything is God's. G-O-D with an apostrophe, yes. What Muslim theology has failed to understand about the doctrine of the incarnation is the doctrine of the two natures of Christ. As Christians, we believe that Jesus Christ is one person, but that he has both a divine nature and a human nature. And in his divine nature, he is omnipotent, all-knowing, uh, uh, timeless, spaceless, or, or whatever. It is his human nature that is like ours, that is spatially located, uh, weak, limited in power, and, and so forth. And therefore, his, these limitations on his human nature have simply no effect whatsoever on his divine nature. Indeed, I would think a being is greater who has the ability to take on a human nature and be incarnate as a human being. Now, where my critique of the Muslim concept of God would come in at this point is that I think that the Muslim concept of God is not the greatest conceivable being. I would, in, and I have, pre criticized the Muslim concept of God precisely because it isn't the greatest concept. And, and what Islam shares more with Judaism than Christianity does. Um, first of all, it's a, it's a, it's a, a religion of the transcendence of God. Right. It's a religion of law and commentary, um, and. And, and, I, and I have a theory for why that is, and Christianity isn't, why Judaism and Islam are, if you want to hear the theory. Sure, let's hear the okay, theory. Okay, here's my theory. My theory is that it's because Christianity grew up in the Roman Empire, so the laws were taken care of. But Moses and Muhammad had to create a people in the desert. Right. So you needed civil law as well as criminal law. Um, and the other thing I think that is, that is beautiful about Islam, although today in some ways very scary about Islam, is the enormous power that it has for large populations who one day know very little about it and yet the next day feel tremendous devotion to it something that can some belief system that can do that is you know that that's worth paying attention to on its own terms not just from the outside well many people still misunderstand that buddhism denies god this is wrong and if you look at the Buddhist text. There is nowhere in the Buddhist text that the Buddha denied the existence of God. Buddhism believes in God, but the concept of God is different from other religions, like from uh, a theistic religion. So God, from the Buddhist point of view, is like a human being. We have many gods. In the trees, there is God. In the river, there is God. Even underneath the earth, there is God, the goddess of earth. But those gods are not like the um, creator god because they are still traveling in the cycle of birth and death. They can't escape from own age, illness and death like all of us. So one day, one day, they may be reborn as a human being, but now they, may, they are born as God. And like in heaven, yes, we have divine beings and we call them sometimes gods. G D a G O D S gods with small capital uh, with small letter. So gods from the Buddhist point of view are not like a um, creator god, and sometimes we respect them because of their good deeds, because of their good action. Then they were reborn as the divine being or as a god.